Hello. Happy Thursday, 8 o'clock. How about that? Punctuality. That's what we like around here. Punctuality. Got a lot to talk about tonight. Been uh, working hard. You look a smile on the face, right? This is It's time to smile. It's 8 o'clock. It's a Thursday night. Tomorrow's Friday. Dune is Dune the 2 is being released tomorrow. We're going to go see it in IMAX over in Orlando and Altamont. And uh, so that's going to be fun. And you're here. We're here. We're here live. We're having fun. And uh, tonight's going to be, there's a lot of stuff on the, on the, on the um, table tonight. And I want to um, welcome you. And I've got, I've got it listed. I have little memory notes. There's some cool stuff. If you, if you've been thinking about like last stream, there was, last stream was pretty good. It was interesting, but this is, you want to be here. Okay, so let's just stop. let's just talk. All right, you're here. Let's see what we got here. Let's hear who's over in the um, the old chatteroonies. Uh, Slidey Pie is ready to help. Thank you, Slidey Pie, for being here. And Yellow Orange Red, <clears throat> you are my editorial agent. I will say I'm thank you for being here. Pencil sharpened. Got my pencil. Give me something to write on, man. Um, hey, Chat and Steve, Christine, John, and Bourbon and Bass. And let's see who else we got here. Zach, good, clean Christian smut. And we're going to talk about that in a second. I'm, we got we got some things to talk about, you and me. All right, you and me, just us chickens. Um, a good Lent. Is it Lent? <laughs> okay. Lee Lee and AJ, good to see you. AJ Mickham. Hey there, hey there, over my Rumble folks. And let's just give a thank you to the rewatch folks because they're not going to be helping, but they're going to miss out on all the cool, exciting, breaking news in the world of Gosney that you're in. And um, and I've got some. Uh, let's see, where do we even start? Well, I'll be at late. I'll be on laid back news tomorrow at noon. The return of Gosney. I got something to promote, right? Got something to promote and uh, something to talk about. And I'll just go there and hang out with my lawyer buds see what's up there um so that's that's the first thing i gotta remember to do that tomorrow <laughs> let's see <laughs> um okay there's so much let me see okay the, the next thing horse Cl clopper 9000 is a member for six months that's pretty cool i have memberships available i don't know what i do with them exactly but it's neat because then you get little pop-ups that like say this horse clopper 9000 member for nine months with the cute little duck so that's pretty neat. Um, and I think you get little emojis. Do you like the emojis I put up? We're going to have to, we got some things. We got to think, oh, I got to do that too. There's so much. Um, I want to have another big announcement that I'm going to tell you about. I'll tell you another big announcement. I will be doing a meet and greet. I have scheduled a meet and greet. And uh, I will answer this in a second here. Uh, yes, the meet and greet is scheduled. Let's go ahead and I'll just go ahead and show it to you on where to find it on the webpage. So you, you don't have to write it down. You don't have to remember with your, with your pencil. You can instead go to my website and you can check it out and you'll be able to follow up if, if it is something that you uh, feel the need to, to go to, or you can go to, I'd love to see you there. How do I do this? What am I doing? Confusion. Present, share screen. Steve Gosnicom. Okay, so here we go. Can you see that? All right, so we got our little stevegosney.com. Go over here. Can you go to the top? Can you see that? Events. Meet and greet Savannah, Georgia, Saturday, March 30th, 8 p.m. Saturday, March 30th, 8 p.m. I will be at the Baobab Lounge, Lounge, Baobab Lounge at the JW Maravat Savannah Plant River Riverside District. All right. So if you can come over to um, Savannah on Saturday, March 30th at 8 p.m., we'll hang out. So just come there, the Baobab Lounge, which will be there. Um, I will tell you that the reason I'm going to be in Savannah is because from three to five, Tony Franklin will be doing a base clinic thing there, a base meet and greet kind of thing. So I'm going to piggyback his meet and greet by doing my own meet and greet. So we can do that. All right. So that's Saturday, March 30th, 8 p.m. at the um, at the lounge at the Savannah Marriott. So that's kind of neat. Okay. 
you know what? I, I shut it down. I should have gone back. There's more stuff. Did you all see? So there's a few little updates on this website, more than more than just the one that we showed there. Let me go back to the other one. Share. Can we back? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here we roll down. We've got there, we've got there, and look, death penalty desires. Pre-order now, hardcover, limited edition, death penalty desires, passion, lust, and murder. So that is a sample cover. This is not the final cover, but it's it's kind of in the area that we're looking for. What do you think? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So here's the summary. A double homicide takes the country by storm. All clues point to Amanda Smallwood. Can she escape the vortex of passion, lust, and murder that threatens to destroy her? The suspects are many and the law is real. The innocent suburban Halfways must journey through hell to discover the boundaries of her innermost desire for submission and find the man who can protect her while making her dream come true. Actually, um, oh, Wendy H., you like the sample cover? Yeah, so Wendy H., <laughs> so you did, dude, this is funny. Funny, you see there? Okay, um, actually, I've amended that. I, 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 look, can I tell you the, of course I can, it's my show, uh, the back cover. All right, so here is the back cover text that, we fi that I've finalized. Remember we worked on this back cover text a while back? Let me get it here. Consent. You see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got it? So here's the, the desire for submission and the sex toy killer. A double homicide takes the nation by storm. All clues point to Amanda Smallwood. Soon, a vortex of passion, lust, and murder consumes her. The lonely housewife must journey through a personal hell to understand her innermost fantasies. Can she find the man who protects her while making her dreams come true? The suspects are many and the law is real. Enter, if you dare, into the world of death penalty desires. John Grisham meets Fifty Shades of Grey. So that's my, um, that's my, uh, what do you call it? That's my, that's what I'm sticking to it. All right. Let's see. You like that? Uh, yellow, orange, red, you like that? Okay, so that's where I think we're going to, that's our back cover text. Uh, let me see. Pre-sales are not going good. I will say I'm I'm a little disappointed, and we're going to talk about it. I have three sales on the hardcovers. Now, I should say that's great because they're expensive books, and I get it. Um, I really want to get to about 15 or 20. I, I know, and I'm maybe I'm overshooting the mark or whatever, but... If I sold 20 books, then that would pretty much be break even for me. If I had sold 20 books at this level. Um, but, you know, and then everything else would be gravy. It's in the bag. I mean, it's kind of full speed ahead for me anyways. That's the way I work. And it's probably I shortchange myself on that. But what am I going to do? Uh, yeah, thank you. I have fun having you here because we're going to we're going to do some editing and very important. This I'm really glad. Stick around to Yellow, Orange, Red because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But I want to get this new first chapter that I've drafted done. And you're going to see it. This is the first time it's going to be out in public, all right? Unless you're a Locals member, in which case you could probably already have read it. But we're going to make it great because, okay, let's let's just get into it. Um, yeah, that's Jacob Castro. I get it. Yeah, I love it. You know, I'm a guy of the chat. What can I say? I started in Vice Squad and the, the Rakeda chats. That's where I came from. And Bronca plucked me out and started this whole adventure and this new hobby of mine so it's all good and thank you aj for getting yours i know you and um there's we've have had three sales you and wendy h and uh and one other person so you guys are awesome let's see um so what i have done i have read all my i've read my book front to back and i did my i did my edit basically. So it was all done. I've, I've, this is the first time I've actually read it front to back. Isn't that funny? Um, and doing that, oh, it's so much. I mean, it is, it's now ready. I have a friend who is going to read it. And I'm going to lock him in a room for a day and make him read it and edit it because I don't want it to get an electronic copy. I'm going to give him a paper copy. And he's not going to leave that room until he finishes editing my book. <laughs> and then, 
and then I will then he will uh, unlock it or he'll give it back to me. We'll bring it back into the sealed container and he'll get it back. OK, um, and then he will edit it. But it's ready. I'm now confident in what I've got and I'm ready for somebody else to look at it and edit it. Yeah. Um, so Slidey Pie is good questions. OK, so here's the plan. Right now it is I could. I am so close. I mean, the thing is, is I know how to get it done. I know how to get it done. So I've got the I've got this draft. To me, it's like basically the final draft. I do need to have another set of eyes. I don't trust anybody else to mess with. It's like a painter. Would 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 a painter let somebody else like paint on their painting? I mean, I I don't trust anybody else with my work. But I, then again, I can reject their suggestions. I had a really good suggestion for one person who read it. And she suggested uh, that I add this first chapter that we're going to work on tonight. And, and she's 100% right on that. And that's the thing. You never know until another set of eyes looks at it where you can improve it. And she gave me great suggestions, Tatiana, not that we're naming any name. She gave me a great suggestion for how to improve it. And I did. I added a chapter. And uh, I think it's great. It's much improved. But it needs a first chapter. And it needs your help. And so what I did was, here it is right here. Okay, so here's, this is part one. That's part one. Um, this is part two, and this is part three. So I've actually gone through it and seen it's really kind of three books in one. The first, the first part is called the setup. The second part is called the trial, and the third part is called the ordeal. So, um, so anyways, I'm going to do a hard, I can do a card cover like tonight or tomorrow if I wanted it, but I'm not, I'm going to hold off for a month if I can, if I can resist, because I want you all to get this first run of hardcovers, because I think this will be your only chance at getting a hardcover. It will be, and I'm going to sign, number, get the highest quality printing, because see, one of the things that, what I really like about this thing, I want to have my own hardcovers. I love, I'm a book guy. I love books and I love hardcovers. So this is all printed at the top quality paper and they will all be signed, numbered, dated, personalized if you wish. First edition hardcovers. Now we're going to talk about this because they're, oh, they're $85. So it's expensive. It's an investment, but there's the only time. Now, if, if, and when I flip it, into Amazon, it will be very inexpensive. It will be available on Kindle and soft cover for a lot less, I think. This is the way to support me. This is the way to get yourself a hardcover. Now, the question is, we got to talk about this. What am I going to do after? I, once I do that initial hardcover run, then I'm going to be satisfied. Then it's going to go up and I could just do it on Amazon and the soft covers and have them available just like all my other stuff. But I think this, when I get done with this, I think this book has a huge mass appeal. And uh, I've begun to look for literary agents. And that's, that's I'm, I might shop the book around to some literary agents. So if I do that, I'm not sure. I don't know if I want to release it on Amazon. I'm going to, so between, during this interim of month, where I'm I'm pre-selling the hardcovers, I might be shopping for agents. And if I if I shop for agents and I get an agent, that might delay the actual book release for months, months. Okay, so it's all done. It's packaged, it's ready to go. But the, you know, to get it into their system and to get it promoted and all that, it might delay it. So that's why I'm not certain. Now, if it's if it's if it goes, if I do it a month, and I'm thinking that I will. I want to sell the book when either the Sarah Boone trial or preferably the OnlyFans model trial goes because I'll be covering that. I'll be going on different streams and I'll be selling it. And so I'll be selling it to people on that in that release. That's what I'm kind of anticipating. And then once I, that one of those goes, I'll cut it off and then shift it over to Amazon and do the soft covers and ebooks. But if I if in the, if between now and then I get hooked up with an agent, that may delay things. So, um, yeah, and I, I, so this is Yellow Andre. I, I think I, when I read this, I think it's got huge potential. I mean, and maybe I'm not, I don't read, the, this is not something I would normally read. And maybe it's a little unusual. And maybe it's a little 
it's it's very unusual. It's very, it's not a usual book. You will not have read any. This is completely original. I guarantee you, it's complete. You will never have read anything like it. But it is. Um, and but I'm very excited because I just got done reading my own book, and I think it's wonderful. And I and I'll add another thing. I have now since created a theme in here that is a bit more. I added two things. Another sex scene. For all of you ladies, I see what you want. You want more sex scenes. Add another sex scene. But I also added a thread, a more of a religious thread, a, a redemption thread, a thread of salvation that I didn't think was going to be in here. That I it kind of came out of nowhere. And you know, once I got kind of the book done, these little messages were popping up. And it's not hard, you know, like I'm not a believer in the hard sell on the religion, right? But it's there. It's there. And and I so I've I've worked on it. And I, I think it really is very subtle, but it comes through and, and there's a, a larger moral point. I guess I can't can't divorce Gosney away from his fiction. But it, it gets there is a moral through and there's a there's also a growth. There's a growth. If in the main characters, there's a there's a um, a transcendence in this book that's more than just a dirty be or a dominance and submission fantasy, which it has that in it. But um, it's very unusual. So that's um yeah, Shane's here. Good to see you, Shane. We're gonna be hanging out. Um, I got more to tell you before we get it because once we get drafting, it's like we're just gonna draft and draft and draft because we got to make this first chapter. Great, because if I have, if I, I want to capture this agent, I want to capture the person looking at that preview chapter, right? And when they do, I want them to really want to read more. Yeah, yeah, yellow, orange, red. It kind of, and and I think I might have told you this last time is that when I um, I needed to focus on these central characters. That was my final thing that I really wanted to polish. It's funny that that's the last thing, but yeah, I did, and it. I'm just so excited. I, I can't tell you. I, I, I must, you know, and I'm, people are, there's going to be a lot of people. It's not as, it's not as dirty as I remembered thinking it. Now, maybe, maybe what I think is dirty is tamed to what you got, all you dirty minded people are. But, you know, I think there's some dirty stuff in here, you know, but maybe not. I don't know. You tell me. I can't wait for you to get a handle of it. Um, all right. So what else we got? Do you remember I was telling you I read the chapter on L? Do you, do you remember that about the 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 character who had who sat down at the table with college in college with the real the top of the heap pretty girl and and uh, and they um do, do do you guys remember that that story? Did I read that to you? I think I did. I think I read it on my last stream, right? I have a follow up on that if you want to hear it. Because the big the big book launch the book big um, the big book launch is going on Saturday night so that's that's my first first saw first it's my first hard launch for the pre sales for the hardbacks so I'm gonna have on a bunch of guests so far I've got um, Andrew Branca got Danielle um, I might have Jeff Geises cannot make it he's on a plane. Um, I might have the expert. We might have, I've got a couple more invites out that I want to leave out. One of them might be Grok, my, my book designer, my cover designer that does the summer friend. And he did death penalty debates design. And he did um, a bunch. He does all my cover designs. So I, I invited him on. He's from Serbia. So I'm hoping he will join us. That'll be kind of neat. Good fella. Catch up, man. And... I'm trying. I'm going to send an invite. No guarantees. I'm sending an invite to hell. How about that? How about that, folks? Okay. So I told you the story. This is cool because I what I did after that stream the other night, I was like, you know, I never told that story to hell. I don't know. We never really talked about that. So um, so I, I am connected with her on Facebook. And so I, I sent her um, I sent her a link to the the stream and I said, Hey, check it out. You know, and like hour, one hour and 45 minutes in or whatever it is. Um, I tell this story and, and it's, 
I wanted to let you know that, you know, you really made an impact on my life and in maybe a, you know, a small way, but in a beautiful way. And I really always on, always respected you for that. And always, you remember the story about the woman who, you know, I'm, you know, she's the top of the heap and here's this, you know, lower level guy approaching her. And she, most women would just kick him to the curb and, you know, that's an insult. How dare you approach me? But she was always so kind and always so nice. And, uh, and like I said, I'm still friends with her on Facebook. Now, you know, don't hang out, but I mean, you know, it's one of those social media friends that I've always, always respected the girl. So, um, and she's still beautiful. So she's single. She's um, working hard. She works for a, uh, um, actually, you know what I should tell, but I, I can't tell. And until, until she agrees to come on, I can't tell too much. But I, um, anyways, so she, I sent her to the thing and she, here's what she wrote back. This is cool. So this, I'm going to read it to y'all because I don't think she'd be too upset if I, or she won't be too upset if I tell you this. Although some people get upset, like Megan Fox got mad at me for reading her, for, for revealing something. But I don't know. I mean, what's to hide here? Okay. So here's what she says. I'll read most of it. I'll see if I can edit some. L says, uh, hello, I watched the whole two hours because I wanted to hear how you were doing. It is so exciting to see your fiction and nonfiction career as well as your law career and family. Thank you for telling such a lovely story. I always think of you, my friend, and me on our trip. We went on a we went on a, a trip to DC and do that's where our bigger friendship started. And I will always value your heart and your mind. And I always knew that you were a true person. And that's important for you to know. Oh, isn't she sweet? Um, God bless Steve, and thank you for sharing that story. It's the small moments in life that can always touch someone else that you don't realize. Today, you are the bright part of my day. Thank you. Oh, I'll see there. That's my friend. I hope she comes on. So I'm going to send her the link. We'll see if she shows up. I hope if Bronk is, I'm going to kick him out. <laughs> if Bronk, if she comes up, he starts giving that. Now, now let me ask you this. Uh, L, your name. Let me ask you this question. You know, I'm gonna, he's going to get booted, all right? So he's not going to interrogate my friend. L because she's beautiful and wonderful, but I'll invite her. We'll see. She might not show. I doubt she'll show, but you know, my, I always, my hope springs eternal. And if you don't ask, you won't get, but wouldn't that be fun? Then you guys can ask her all the questions. What was Gazi like in college? <laughs> all right. Yes. It gets me and moves me. See, I'm going to, I have to wear my heart, my sleeve. Um, okay. So we got that. Savannah meet great. We talked about that. Um, I'm going to solicit my, I'm going to work on an agent publisher between now and then. Okay. Got that. Um, okay. I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to have to tell you this. And this is, uh, do I have to? Yes. Cause you're my, you're my friends and I'm going to tell you. So I've got death penalty desires, part one, two, and three in the bag final draft it's ready to go off to somebody else's eyes to look at for a final edit so this thing is is almost ready to go um but i wanted to let you see <laughs> death penalty designs maximum due process my training manual for appellate attorneys okay <laughs> so uh this one's at 187 pages <laughs> So, but that one, believe me, if, you know, if you're a law nerd and you want to read a bunch of law and like a handbook on how to do a trial appeals and in other capital cases, that will be for you. If you want to have passion and lust and murder in Florida, you want death on desires. Okay. All right. So now I want to show you this one more thing. You might have seen this already. You might know this, okay, but I'll share it anyway. So here, that's the book. See that? So that now this is this is a draft. Grok, this is Grok's first draft. First draft. Okay, and so this is what he just bangs it out. Now I I kind of want a more of a business suit look here. This is a little too casual, I think, for our lead because he's a superstar appellate attorney. Um, I like the female hand here and I like the buff because see that that's really just me. That's just, he just took a picture of me. That's what it was. 
And uh, I want the Steve Gazi to be up top. I'm thinking Desires could be sort of like pink Miami Vice style. Maybe this would be Miami Vice style lettering. I don't know. Um, and then I want the subtitle in there too. But that's that's kind of the that's the look right there so far. That's kind of the idea. I want it to be romance, sexy romance novel. But it's it's not. You know, that's selling it short. But you gotta sell the book, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got some. Uh, you like that? Each one of my um, well designs. If you like death penalty debates, and you said, you know, I like death penalty debates, but it wasn't nerdy enough for me. I needed I needed more um, hard law. <laughs> I want to know the real history behind it and what the legal problems are with the Florida's death penalty statute. Death penalty designs will be for you. If you're interested in the public policy debate, death penalty this debates. If you're interested in watching it, the statute unfold in real time, if you want to see an, a, a, a jury trial, if you want to read about a jury trial, a capital jury trial, a death penalty jury trial from the inside, and it's the most interesting and titillating crime that you'll ever see anywhere, death penalty desires. Because this is this is done, this is an amalgam of multiple trials that I've been involved with to get out the most interesting and most important and most exciting and salacious stuff that I could find to amalgamate it into one particular case to give you something that's interesting and exciting because a lot of the people that watch me are people that love watching trials and law streamers and stuff. Although I'm kind of, you notice I'm kind of backing away from that. I don't, I don't want to watch. Trials. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, I'll drop in when I have something to say. Fair enough. Um, let's see. What else? Okay. Yes. Now we're going to do our editing. Okay, we got the cover draft. You saw that. Death penalty designs. Oh, and one more. Okay, one more. One more diversion, then we'll get to editing. I you know, keep saying that, but presses it. I'm I'm tired, so we gotta we gotta crank it tonight, right? I, I'm editing all day today. We got this. Um you see that? Okay, yes, we can see it. Um, if you go up here to friends. Look here. Okay, you click up in the top left corner. Here's Jackson. Look here. Here's the next. Did you? Did I show you that? That's Jackson. That's the Jackson. See there. That's my artist rendition of um, my difficult dog. It's so that sad. I hit the that I hit the three thousand mark, and now I'm back to a hundred. It sucks. But if you want to, that's going to be targeting. I'm. I really. My goal for for Jackson and my difficult dog. And if you go here, you can go read here. And this will give you all of, this is the actual text of the book that needs to be illustrated along with the biblical quotes that each one of these lines is connected to. So that that will be, I, I'm gonna target that for again, a Thanksgiving release date like we did um, Brucey. And um, good, all right. Expert, expert, you're gonna be at my, uh, stream on Saturday, right? Okay, back to uh, back to Riel. We're gonna do some editing tonight. Skip, skip ahead, young man. All right, present. You can see that. Can you see that? Zoom in a little bit, maybe. Is that better? How does that look? Yellow, to red, yellow, orange, red. You're gonna play. Well, a difficult dog. In order for that to work, I need to hit my goal, my fundraising goal. I tell you, finances have. My financial situation has taking a turn for the worse personally. And, you know, the wife's rule that I am not to lose money on these things is fully in effect. And I slipped this novel under the wire. <laughs> but um, I need to make these things at least break even. I can't be losing money on these things. So if we want Difficult Dog, we need to get it funded. But I'm not starting that push on that yet. And um, 
Yeah, money is tight. Yeah, you're right, alien. Tell us about it. Okay, so here we have the the entitlement. The one thing, okay, how do you write like this? How do I write and get so much done so quickly? I calculated it. And so I did, in 10 days, I did 50,000 words. So that's five, and that's 330 words, 330 pages. So that's basically 33 pages and 5,000 words a day. That's not much. We can do that. 30 pages and 5,000 words. I can do that. That's no problem. And, and what you do is you, I frame it all out. I know where I want to go. I know my characters. I know what I want to do. And then you just, I write the outline and then write all the pieces between here and there. And then that's how I did it. So this book was written in 10 days. Now don't, don't take that as a mark. It was a lifetime, a lifetime of work, but all right, the entitlement. Amanda Smallwood looked through the love bug pocked front windshield of her Porsche Cayenne, voicing frustration at the stoplight. She had to wait for another whole cycle before moving on. Flicking her pink glitter sparkle Apple iPhone, she checked her messages. Nothing from Butch. She flicked her up. Oh, I did flick, flicked. So tapping. You there? Tapping her pink glitter sparkle iPhone, she checked her messages. Nothing for Butch. She flicked her wipers, and the bugs smeared. What next? Pulling the washer fluid clicker thingy, she expected a squirt of blue liquid, but the pump only hummed, no cleaner. Why hadn't Butch checked the fluid? The sun beat down through a deep blue late afternoon sky. Stuck in traffic, Mrs. Swalwood considered her plight. Maybe she could go back to being Miss Amanda Carey. Carey. Right, that's right. I, I had a Corey Carey problem in here. Before. She looked down at the handwritten, type, the handwritten receipt from the family lawyer in her cup holder. No need for Butch to see this. She crumpled the paper and shoved it into her glove compartment. She ruled out running back to mother. Hell, Getting away from mother was a huge reason she'd married Butch in the first place. Had her life before been so bad? After daddy died, the house seemed so empty. Mother spent her days out on shopping trips or socializing with her country club friends. So really, she had the house all to herself. How did she find herself now, after six years of marriage, with another vacant and meaningless house? Living in... Maybe. Butch checked out long ago. The house could be sold. Her lawyer told her at the meeting. The accountant valued the suburban real estate at over a million. She would get most of it, and she could keep half his income, which meant she could continue shopping pretty much unaffected. Thanks to Abraham Kisling, their CPA, Butch had compiled a decent mound of cash that she could, she could take that she could take should a divorce occur. But who would take care of her? Her boss for the last six months, Dr. Fidel Ali Arian, made his intentions quite clear. No doubt Fidel, no doubt Fidel checked all the boxes, rich, single, and a doctor. But he, but he could have anyone. But he seemed to be taken with her but no way she would make a move without stepping out of her marriage. No way she would make a move without stepping out of her marriage first. No way this is wrong. He could have, he could have anyone, but he seemed taken with her, but no way she would make a move without. That's wrong. Okay. We got to fix that. Let's just put this. Mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd, let's say that no way she'd give him. Mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give mama that leverage over her also. Lena encouraged a fling. How far would he go? He could have anyone. Hell, Lena practically threw herself at him. Such a free spirit. But Fidel seemed so, seemed very careful not to tread where so many had gone before. If she were to leave Butch, Fidel would need to offer up some guarantees. 
Powerful droplets pelted her window as a quick Friday downpour thundered across the commuters. The sun still shone as the rain fell. Typical Florida summer thunder shower. At least the glass might be cleared of the bug guts. A grubby bum on the side of the road held up a wet cardboard sign. It read, God bless the homeless veterans. Damn beggar. She looked around for a policeman to rescue her from the disgusting looking image, but none came forward. The light turned and she peeled away. All right, so there's our there's our new opening chapter. Um, what do you think so far? Yeah, you see there, there we got the, uh, what are love bugs? Exactly. See, this is, see, Florida people will know. Danielle, you know about love bugs, right? Uh, back to life, back to reality. Yeah, Shane knows about love bugs. Um, how awful to have bugs have a name like that. Yeah, I love Yeah, there, so what they you, you look them up if you don't know if you're in Florida you'll know okay part of this there's a there's a Florida theme here that runs through it kind of thinking a little bit of modern day Miami Vice. Um, okay, so good for after this is so we're going to take this front. I wanted you to read it through, and then we're going to take it paragraph by paragraph. So what kind of person is Amanda Smallword here at the beginning of the show? Take out, okay, take out front. All right, so we're already starting to end. All right, let's see. Front and just have the windshield. Is that at the end there? front the windshield okay yes you know what but anybody who lives in florida knows what a love bug pocked windshield is right wouldn't you say danielle come on you're a florida person um so let's let's start with our or let's start with our first sentence all right we ready i'm gonna put it over here so i can see your all's chat because you guys are helping me out right and we're gonna make we want to make this as tight as possible tight so she's an entitled woman. She expects to be served. Remember, she's submissive. She's super submissive. So she just thinks that, but there's also this other, she has a flaw. Submissiveness is not a flaw. Yeah, pock does mean dented. Pocked means dented. But the thing is, is those damn love bugs, when they sit on your car too long, they'll actually pock your windshield. They will actually, uh, um, it, it gives you that feeling of like it's going to damage your car because <laughs> they just cover it. You have no clue how bad those things. So Amanda looked through the love bug popped windshield of her Porsche Cayenne, voicing frustration at the stoplight. She had to wait for another whole cycle before moving on. Tapping her pink glitter sparkle iPhone. Do I need to put Apple? Whoops, darn it. Probably take Apple out. Let's just do iPhone. Tapping her pink glitter sparkle iPhone, she checked her messages. Nothing from Butch. She flicked her wipers and the bugs smeared. What next? Pulling the washer fluid clicker thingy, she expected a squirt of blue liquid, but the pump only hummed, no cleaner. How do we like that, that opening one? People don't like my uh, pockmarked, huh? Pocked. You don't like love bug pocked? I love the love bug red. Maybe pocked is the word you don't like. Um, you know, I'm going to make you pull out a dictionary once in a while. <laughs> or at least use a little bit of literary flourish and license to make it um, more fun. You, you, I, I'm only, I think the only the Florida people are really qualified to 
change the word pox. So I'm going to look to like Shane and Danielle. Um, what, what say you? Baked? No, that's, that's pretty good. Actually, Shane, you got something there. What the pock? Not a dictionary. Baked. Hmm. That's pretty good. Baked. That might be the word. Baked. I like pock, but baked might be better. Love bug baked windshield of her Porsche Cayenne. Hmm, that's pretty good. Riddled. Riddled. Um, riddled or baked? What do you say? What, what is our choice? Come on, chat. You got to help me out here. I'm, I'm looking to you now. Most, yes, yeah, slidey. Most people can't relate to Florida speak. You can see these little love bugs. They're little black bugs. They fly. They don't sting. They're quite friendly. In fact, as a Floridian, you usually when you see them, you grab them because they have slow motion and they they mate and they hook up together back to back and then they're attached. And so they fly and they're flying on either way. And so they just kind of float around like this. <laughs> they're little black bugs with orange, orange little spots on them and uh, quite harmless, quite gentle, very slow flyers, easy to catch. They're they're not they're not repulsive. They're quite friendly, and uh, but they they are all over the place. And when they're when they're breeding, all they care about is breeding, and so they just pour pour into the air. And when you drive, they just they can't get away, and they just splatter on your windshield, and your your windshield just gets caked with it. Yellow can live with riddled. You like riddled? I just the word riddled. The problem with that is you think about the riddler. So I like the word riddled for its meaning but I'm not sure if it's the best word. Caked, how about caked? Love bug caked windshield. That's better. Maybe we should go that one. Splattered. Hey, thank you for, you're spending your time with me on this fine Thursday night. Caked is good. Caked. So let's take out riddled. And baked, I like it because it's that Florida sun reference. But I think we're between caked and splattered. Caked. I wish I knew how to do the... Um, I wish I knew how to do the voting thing. We could vote it. Wouldn't that be cool? All right. So here we are. We're with Amanda Small would look through the love bug caked windshield of her Porsche Cayenne, voicing frustration at the stoplight. Splatter. They do splatter. They splatter and then they cake. <laughs> crusted. Crusted. It's not really crusty, though. It's more of a juicy splatter. <laughs> it's more of a juicy splatter. <laughs> Florida people, what do you think? Okay, come on. Uh, what do you think there, Earl? Uh, let's see, love bug, caked. I think splattered might be the word. Is the windshield caked? Yeah, yeah. Maybe let's go with splattered. Because I don't want people thinking cakes. I want people thinking splattered. <laughs> yeah, Shane, you've got it. All right, I think we're going to go with splattered. Glazed is also good. See, there's a lot of good words here. See, English in the English language, amazing how many words there are. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go with splattered. Although I'll tell you, you know, pocked is in less a griddled, baked, glazed. All right, let's go with splattered. She had to wait for another whole cycle before moving on. Is a, if we want to have a what is a stoplight cycle calling up on the Stop and go. Um, she's not screaming frustration. She's not insane. <laughs> it is a relatively uh, harmless thing to be frustrated at, right? So she's not screaming. We don't want to go overboard. But is she really voicing? She Smallwood looked at the love bug splattered windshield of her Porsche Cayenne, voicing frustration at stoplight. What is not about, we don't have to change voicing. Voicing is our word. What's this? She's 
She's not screaming. She, she's voicing, she's um, expressing frustration at the stoplight. What is, what is the what is it? Voicing sounds kind of mechanical. She yeah, looks at the love boards. She's she's expressing. Um, we could say frustrated at the stoplight. Would it be better peered, looked, um, gazed through the love board? Is she saying something? No, she's just in her car alone, driving home from work at five o'clock in Florida on a Friday. And, you know, in Florida, we get we get traffic cycles and you got to wait in the line. And the worst is when you get, you're, you know, you're pulling up to the stoplight and then you go, you go, 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 go. And then there it is. Um, and then you get, and then it's like the light stops and you got to wait another whole cycle. And you're like, oh. Got to wait for another minute at the stoplight. Such difficulty, such entitlement. I'm entitled to drive home without stoplight. Um, growling frustration. Zach, I think you got it. Growling, I think that's better. Growling frustration at the stoplight. Now, is that feminine enough? Glaring, she could glare. She could glare at the stoplight, but she looked through the, she's looking through the splitter and she's glaring. So I'd rather have it a verbal sound. Growling is pretty good. What is a female growl? Muttering frustration. How about muttering? Mewing. <laughs> it's the yellow, I'm glad you're here, yellow one, right? You are the best. Growling or muttering frustration. She's muttering kind of under her breath. Mm. She had to wait for another whole cycle before moving, moving forward. <laughs> Shame. You get a little, see there, you want to be a little more direct. I tend to try, muttering is better. You think muttering is better than growling? muttering yeah because it's i don't think women don't really growl i mean if they are you're in trouble <laughs> and maybe we're in trouble with amanda here but i don't think we're at that point just yet i think we can wait a little bit women can growl but i don't think they growl at this particular point i think that this is a, a she's an entitled young lady in a porsche with her gl 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 pink glitter sparkle iphone you know the type right you ladies know the type I have growled. I have growled. Muttering frustration. She had to wait for another whole cycle before moving forward. Tapping her pink glitter sparkle iPhone, she checked her messages. Nothing from Butch. She flicked her wipers and the bugs smeared. What next? Pulling the washer fluid clicker thingy. See, the clicker thingy is a, that's a like, Pouting. What was where would pouting go? Her hubby bush. Yeah, her hubby bush. Although that's a little friendly because Butch is just about getting whacked, right? <laughs> and he is a cheater. But on the other hand, does she really know that? Nothing from from hubby butch. How about just hubby butch? Her hubby butch or just hubby butch? <laughs> yeah, we get orange red, yeah. Exactly. You've been there. There's a there's a few moments in this book that you will just completely relate to, right? That are just kind of off topic, but simple little vignettes into life. Like remember our guy in the in the the robbery who's just trying to figure out what uh what medicines his wife wanted him to buy in the in the store? <laughs> 
I like those little observations. There's a lot more philosophy in this book than I expected. When I did the, the lose, no, I love clicker thingy. We're not losing clicker thingy, kind of fellow. That's absolutely staying. Because the whole idea, remember, it's Amanda Smallwood in her Porsche, frustrated at the light change, tapping her pink glitter sparkle iPhone. She doesn't know what that thing's called, right? She's just pulling the washer fluid clicker thingy. <laughs> that's that's a um, that's a sign that she doesn't really care. She's not qualified. It's uh, she flicked her her windshield wiper. Yeah. Okay, so she flicked. She, what did what did she do? She what did she do? Her she um, engaged. Engaged. The windshield wipers and the bugs smeared. Is that right? Nothing from a hubby but she engaged the windshield wipers and the bugs smeared. I don't know. I think we need a comma there. You people overuse comma. Sounds robotic. What's better for engaged? She um, engaged John Luke Picard. Yeah, you're right about that. Well, what's a better word? What's a chick word for engaging the windshield wipers? Yeah, expert and Danielle will be on my Saturday stream, right? Yeah, we need a chick word for in. Come on, Danielle, I need your help. You're you're my chick. <laughs> of course, we got some good writer chicks in here. You're in general, right? You got a lot of chicks, so you're my chick fans. She engaged. What what do you say when you turn on the the wipers? She turned on the she turned on the wipers. How about that? She turned on the windshield wipers. How about that? See, sometimes transactions just. You think flicked is better? How about she flicked, flicking the white washer fluid clicker thingy? We could put in pulling, but you pull the washer fluid. You liked flick better? Slidify likes flick. Flicked. Clicked. Clicked on? Yeah, she turned on, so she clicked on. Do we already have clicked in here? Didn't we have clicked somewhere? She clicked on the windshield wipers and the bug smear. That's better. She clicked on her windshield wipers and the bug smear. What next? Pulling the washer fluid clicker thingy. But see, now we have clicked here. We have clicker thingy and we have clicked. So we're back to turned on. Switched on, switched on. Do we have another switched in here? That's better, better than turned. Look through the bug. Modern, she had to wait for the whole something. Tapping her pink letters on. She checked her messages. Nothing from Hubby Butch. She switched on the windshield. How about just the, the windshield wipers and the bugs smeared? What next? Pulling the white shirt. Water with like she expected a square of blue liquid, but a completely hot. No cleaner. Okay, I think that's it. I think switched. Okay, so I got we. Uh, why hadn't Butch checked the fluid? So she's now she's grumpy. And you put in a, a single sentence like that. See, now we're breaking rules, literary rules for all you English majors out there. Um, and that's a one sentence paragraph, which is not supposed to be. If in English class, I'd get marked off, but I'm a creative writer and I do what I want. So. And I don't get graded anymore. And I like it. Because why hadn't Butch checked the fluid? Because it just says her thought. 
All right, so let's mix that. Sun beat down through the deep, the sun beat down through a deep blue late afternoon sky. We know about that, us Floridians. Shane, Danielle, uh, the sun beat down through a deep blue late afternoon sky. Stuck in traffic, Mrs. Smallwood considered her plight. Maybe she could go back to being Miss Amanda Carey. She looked down at the handwritten receipt from the family lawyer in her cup holder. No need for Butch to see this. She crumpled the paper and shoved it into her glove compartment. What's a thought? I don't know what a thought is, Shane. You got to explain these things to me. I've heard that. I've seen that term, and I know it's some kind of referring to a female, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, family lawyer is a divorce lawyer. Maybe we should just take out family lawyer. Let's just say lawyer. I don't want to say divorce lawyer. That hoe over there. I don't know what. So what? That hoe over there. What does that mean even? That's that does that, that's a definition without still without context. Yeah, I know you want to say divorce lawyer, and and that is the thing. But she from the lawyer. Okay, so see, but you don't need to say that. See, the thing is, I don't want to say divorce lawyer because for for reasons. So I think these two sentences together, isn't it clear that this is a divorce lawyer? Because she's thinking about going back to being Miss. She's why she's frustrated at Butch. She's stuck in traffic. She's considering her plight. She could go back to being Miss. Miss. Maybe we should italicize that. Miss Amanda Carey. She looked down at the handwritten receipt from her from the lawyer in her cup or cup holder. No need for Butch to see this. She crumpled the paper and shoved it into her glove compartment. All right. I think I think we're good. Plight seems related to the bugs, <laughs> molten salt. Shooting in uh, shooting in side comments. I love it. All right, I think we're good. She ruled out running back to mother. Hell, getting away from mother was a huge reason she'd married Butch in the first place. Had her life before been so bad? You know, this. there's a little disconnect here. After daddy died, the house seemed so empty. Mother spent her days on sh shopping trips or socializing with her country club friends. So really, she had... The, How about this when her life had her life before been so bad after daddy died, the house seemed so bad. mother spent her days out on shots. So really she had the house on herself. This sentence is a little clumsy. Yes. Mother spent her days out on shop. on shopping trips or socializing with her country club friends. Mother spent her days on shopping trips or socializing with her country club friends. So really, she had the house all to herself. Molten salt, I don't think the lawyer sees clue. I don't know, I think, I think it is. Yeah, that's why I italicized the miss because it's, uh, I don't wanna miss that line. I think we put a period here, maybe. Mother spent her days on shadow or social media with friends. Really? She had the house all to herself. The old house, the... about the place. Had her life been so bad, 
Had her life before been so bad? After daddy died, the house seemed so empty. Mother spent her days on shopping trips or socializing with her country club friends. Really, she had the place all to herself. How about we need to put really? She had the place all to herself. How did she find herself now, after six years of marriage, living in another vacant and meaningless house? Butch checked out long ago. Butch had checked out long ago. What do you think about this paragraph? Yeah, this is a question. Was she lonely in the house with dad dead and mother out? Or was that something she, well, that's what she's quite trying to figure out, right? Had her life been so bad before? Had her life been so bad before that's better see there I, sometimes talking these things it comes out clearer than you know you write them away and then when you say it see i just said it what i wanted to say and then it sounds better had her life been so bad before after daddy died the house seemed so empty mother spent her days on shopping trips or social friends. she had the place all to herself okay after the house so there's something there's a sentence right here that's missing But at least but she had a freedom, maybe something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Had her life been so bad? After daddy died, the house seemed so empty. Mother spent her days on shopping trips or socializing with country of friends. She had the place all to herself. So was it really so bad? How about instead of she had a run, she could do what she wanted. She could do what she wanted. It's not really freedom. It's more like, because freedom implies responsibility. Instead, I think we have she could do what she wanted, which goes back to our entitlement. How about now, after six years of marriage, she lived in a, in a vacant in a cushy but meaningless house now if that's better how about that a declaration now after six years of marriage she, she, she's comparing now after six years of marriage she lived in a cushy but meaningless house butch had checked out long ago ah that's better what do you think let's read through this had her life been so bad before after daddy died the house seemed so empty mother spent her days on shopping trips or socializing with her country club friends she had the place all to herself she could do what she wanted. Now, after six years of marriage, she lived in a cushy but meaningless house. Butch had checked out long ago. We're getting closer. What do I mean by meaningless house? Yeah, that's the thing. It's her life. So she's gone from the, her daddy died, empty house. She had that she could do what she wanted. So she kind of had this freedom to be irresponsible. She lived in a cushy. Let's just say what we want to say. She also, what's the concept? She also did what she wanted. But they're like cups of um, privilege. I can't spell. We don't need to put this in then. Put that in somewhere else.
she was good in a cushy house but did she i hear it's what did she have what she wanted about that so that's that's better okay so this is the meaning had her life been so bad before after daddy died the house seemed so empty mother spent her days shopping trips socializing she had the place all to herself so she could do what she wanted now after six years of marriage she lived in a cushy house but did she have did she have what she or did she really have did she really have what she wanted because really it's about her and what she wants and what she can get um molten you you you're that's not the plot line but i appreciate the input The house could be sold. So it's about her getting what she wants, right? It's self-centered Amanda. Yes, yeah, she cared for her father. That's why the hemp, after the house was empty after it showed, there's meaning in her house. There's a home. There's a purpose. And after he died, she's got this, she can do what she wants. So she's got some kind of selfish freedom. And after six years of marriage, she's got the cushy house, but she doesn't have what she wanted. She, she doesn't have that freedom to do whatever she wanted time has turned she's now got the husband butch had checked out long ago i think that's pretty good okay yeah and this is the part of this book is like i said there's an evolution of the two main characters that i had to write in yesterday or yesterday and today that 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 makes this intro story a lot better you know writing stuff All right, so the house, so now she's going to th consider her options. The house could be sold. Her lawyer, the house could be sold, period. Shorter sentences are snappier and better. Her lawyer told her, well, yeah. The house could be sold, her lawyer told her at the meeting. So now we know it's a divorce lawyer, right? This is what the lawyer's advising her. Should be her lawyer or the... Her lawyer told her at the meeting, the accountant valued the suburban real estate at over a million. She would get most of it, and she could keep she could keep half his income, which meant she could continue her shopping pretty much unaffected. Me, me, me. <laughs> uh, thanks to Abraham Kisling, their CPA, Butch had compiled a pretty decent amount of cash. Think shorter sentences are better. She could take that should a divorce occur. But who would take care of her? All right. So she wants the money, but she also wants to be cared for. And I think that do we see this as do we know this person? Is this true? She gets the house at half his income? I this is not true. This is the problem. These ladies, they talk to each other and they talk about how great it is to get divorced and then they they get all these promises yeah you can get that you get the house you get that you get this you don't need him they talk amongst themselves and they work themselves into stupidity and, they, and then they find out reality is much unhappier but she's still in the stupid stage so we'll keep her uh you know young and pretty and stupid that's necessary that's okay yeah for, ladies are like prison lawyers the orange and red you got it Ladies are like prison lawyers. Lots of talk and all inaccurate. Oh, that's a great quote. Uh, but I, I can't. I don't know if I can use that. But that's wonderful. You can't save that quote for your own book. La Yellow, orange, red. That is genius. Ladies are like prison lawyers. Lots of talk and all inaccurate. <laughs> oh, that's great. You need to write that one down. You know, take a little yellow sticky and put a note because you're a good writer and you need to keep that. That's a great quote. Um. All right. Her boss for the last six months, Dr. Fadel Ali Arian, made his intentions quite clear. 
No doubt Fidel checked all the boxes, rich, single, and a doctor. He could have anyone, but he seemed taken with her. Entitled. See, it's just now she's got this option. She's got somewhere to go to, right? Maybe she could solidify that, but she doesn't want to just jump on because she's a good girl. She doesn't cheat on the husband. So she's thinking about that. She's thinking, well, they've got this offer out here, this doctor who's got all checks, all the boxes, but she's got to have some guarantees before she jumps ship. And because if she doesn't, if she just cheats, then she earns the condemnation of her mother. Mon condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give mama to that. No way she'd give mama that leverage over her. Also, mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give mama, mom, that leverage over her too. Lena and her friend Lena encouraged a fling. So now she's thinking about the fling. Mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give mom that leverage over her too. Her friend Lena encouraged a fling. How far could, would he go? He could have, he could have anyone. So sometimes you put a little paragraph in here. Her friend, hell, Lena practically threw herself at him. Such a free spirit. But Fidel seemed very careful not to tread where so many had gone before. How do you like that? What does that tell you about Lena? If she were to leave Butch, Fidel would need to offer up some guarantees. Right? So there's the, there's the guarantee. Now there's something missing here because... Mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give mom that leverage over her. I think we're doing something like that. That's better. No way she'd hand over to mom that saved leveraged. She'd give mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give mom that same leverage. Up that same, up that same leverage because it doesn't have to be to mom. Mom condemned daddy for cheating. No way she'd give up that same leverage because it could be to the mom or it could be to her ex, new to be ex husband, right? Mom condemned, yeah, right. You see there? This is right. She's not a good girl. She knows that her reputation is built on details. If she gets with him one day after the divorce file, she's a moral woman. That's right. So that's the, so you got the way that the that's the way the brain works, right? So she's got the the exit path all paved, but it's not cheating because she didn't to get with him until after the divorce was finalized. So that's technical. But you know, on the other hand, it's rational. I don't think it's irrational. Unlike my friend Andrew likes to say, he likes to condemn being for women for being irrational. I think that's a pretty rational move because you don't want to jump off the ship and have nowhere to go. Maybe, usually, I don't know. I'm just thinking, but I don't think it's completely irrational. Yes, okay, no way she'd give mom that power over. Give, okay, yeah, give mom that over her. That's good. Better than leverage. Leverage isn't the word. See now this is this is what I'm thinking. Okay, Fidel. About Dr. Arian. Could have anyone. Doctor, because he's a doctor. Doctor. You ever see uh Little House of Little Shop of Horrors? I love that movie with uh, Steve Martin and um, 
Bill Murray, one of the greatest scenes of all time. Bill Murray and is the is the is the dentist, and his girlfriend, who's just steals the, the whole movie, was that was the girlfriend, and like yes, yes, why, yes, Daka, <laughs> I love it. All right, so we've got. How about if we put this over here? Dr. Arian, okay, so no way she could on that. Dr. Arian could have anyone. Hell, her friend Lena. And this is the kind of friend that will get you in trouble. The motorcycle. And the motorcycle lands. There were these little details that were just so kooky in that movie. Mom condemned daddy for the cheating. For cheating. No way she'd give mom that power over her. Dr. Arian could have anyone. How about if we just make that a paragraph? Two, two sentences, is that okay? Dr. Arian could have anyone. Hell, her friend Lena practically threw herself at him. Such a free spirit. And this is the thing, like, see, you go, girl. She's free spirit. She encouraged the fling. How far could would he go? Like, testing him. And I think this is not the paragraph. But Fidel seemed very careful not to tread where so many had gone before. Careful, doctor. If she were to leave Butch, Fidel would need to give up some guarantees. Okay, that's better, don't you think? Yeah, this is this is much more logical in sort of a state within its own universe way. I think that's good. Powerful droplets pelted her window as a quick Friday downpour thundered across the commuters. Florida folks recognize that. The sun still shone as the rain fell. We know that one too, right? It's pouring rain. It's like blasting your windshield and, and it's sunny out. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? So uh, you see, this is a Florida, a typical Florida summer thunder shower. At least the glass might be clear to the bug guts because that's what happens when you get in those rainstorms down. You're hoping the water downpour cleans the glass. You're like, maybe that, maybe that thing's gonna get that rain is gonna be so powerful, it'll just blast those bug guts off your windshield. That's what you hope. You're like, okay, it's raining, excellent. Um, oh, well, you can write upon the horizon. You take your dog outside, you write your book. You got it, you can do it. Um, A grubby bum on the side of the road held up a wet cardboard sign. It read, God bless the homeless veterans. Does anybody know that reference, by the way? There's a little side reference there. Damn beggar. She looked around for a policeman to rescue her from the disgusting looking image, but none came forward. The light turned and she peeled away. I think that's a good ending. All right, well, I think that's our first chapter. What do you say? Heavy droplets? Powerful droplets. I don't know. They're powerful. I don't know how heavy they are. They're powerful. Do you know what that is? The, the God bless the who holds up a sign, a cardboard sign saying, God bless the homeless veterans. Anybody looked at Honor Your Oath Investigations? Jeff, Jeff Gray of Honor Your Oath Investigations. He does um, police audits. He'll go out and stand out. And he'll go out and uh He'll stand in front of the um, stand in front of like city halls with a little sign saying "God bless the homeless facts," and then the cops will come up and start harassing him. And he's got videos, and he's part of he has lawyers involved with Fire. Fire is um, great organization, and uh, and when the cops start messing with him, he's like, "I'm just saying God bless the homeless vets." Like, oh, you can't do it here. Who do you think you are? It's like, well, this is free speech. I'm just expressing my free speech, my freedom of religion, my freedom of assembly, all my freedoms that the Constitution guarantees, Mr. Copper. And the cops get all aggressive with him, and they ended up suing him. <laughs> so, well, he doesn't want I mean, he's just, God bless homeless vets. I mean, I love Jeff Gray's. Uh, if you're going to do police auditing, that's the model. That guy knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, the audit dude, Shane Susie, you know that guy. He's excellent. He's real. That's if you're going to do auditing, don't ever do auditing yourself because 
people because you might be one of the crazy people you don't know. So better to do it with a team, a team with lawyers behind you, an extra person filming. You've done it very methodically. It, they, I think they serve a great purpose because our police officers need to protect our people's rights. Um, okay, great. That was fun. Pelted. That's pretty good. Pelted is pretty good. Let me bring that back. See, now you, know, you, you add a suggestion. Let me take a look again. Pelted. I'll zip through here. I'll just look at it. You don't have to bring up the screen. Pelted is a good oh, pelted. Oh, right. Oh, I had that. Okay, that's I used that word. All right, you were just echoing my word. Um, that was fun. I think you, you improved it. What do you think? I think it's better. And that's the critical, that's the opening chapter. So you want people to be kind of captured. You want to know who this person is. And, and I had somebody else read the first, almost the first part of the book, um, about two thirds of the way through the first third. <laughs> I don't know, it's two thirds, two thirds, whatever that is. Uh, six ninths. No way, is that right? I don't know, whatever. Anyways, they read through part of the book and they said, you know, the intro with the thief and the accountant and all, it's interesting, but it doesn't, you know, your main characters are not introduced till way late in the book. So I need to introduce a main character on the first page, the first chapter, the first sentence, and you need to understand who she is. And, uh, and so I think that gives us, and, and also, I also thought this helped quite a bit too, because who is Amanda and where is she going? Because why do you need, why do you care? And a lot of it was, I wanted to make her likable. And she is likable later on. When you first meet her, she's not, you know, and the ladies get kind of jealous. She's a pretty young thing. She's got it all. She's entitled, you know, and men don't like that kind of woman. They feel trapped by them and other women don't like them because they see the flaws in her personality. Um, so she's not necessarily likable up front. But on the other hand, there's a lot of room for growth. Wouldn't you say? So, um, and and also, assuming you don't like her, injustices committed committed upon her. Um, I don't know. Is this a? I mean, even somebody like that should be given a fair trial, right? A fair shake. Uh, yes, it, it's something different. It's very different. And, and so, I'll give you the. After reading through it front to back last night and all day, I took off again today. I took off from work because I was in the role and I was caught up. But um, when I look at this book, the way it's structured is that there's the setup. So there's all the stuff, all the facts that kind of lead. There's the murder and then all the stuff that goes around what happened before, during, and after, and setting up the characters and understanding kind of the interplay and who could have done it. There's sort of a mystery here, and there's understanding the prosecutors and understanding the defense lawyer and all the kind of moving parts that are a criminal trial like this. So the first, this part of the book is that. It's the setup. The detectives, the cops, and then the second part, it's fascinating because this is, is the trial. This is complete. It's like I could almost just take this out and this is almost a teaching document for my lawyers. There's so many legal details and it's all based on absolute fact and reality of cases I've dealt with that I conglomerated into a painful <laughs> jury trial, a death penalty jury trial that's full of, of twists and turns and, and injustice and and when you get done with this you will have sympathy with old gosney here you know when i start talking of getting frustrated with prosecutors and getting upset with them um this is it yeah you think this all right this is my hobby i am so far away of I'll, i just want to break even if i break even i'm happy you guys need to go get the get the hardcover pre-orders pre because I'd like to sell 20 of them to break even, but I have only at three. So please do. Um, you're part of this, and it's it helps me. It's part of my hobby. 
I don't know. The, the wife will be. I keep threatening the wife's going to shut me down. Maybe she's just happy I'm not buying more guitars. <laughs> um, so this is like a jury trial front to back. And it's, you guys like watching trials on TV. This is better than the best jury trial you've ever seen on TV. You get to see the inside of thinking of the lawyers, think of the prosecutors, get to see nasty judges at work get to see how the law really works, how it really works and how it should work. This is uh, the trial, right? And then this one is the ordeal. And this is an inside look on death row with, with mysteries and murders and, uh, and the death penalty looming in the background and absolute degradation and submission and maybe a little romance, maybe a little character development, maybe a little evolution. And you get to, by going through this experience, maybe you can learn something and you don't have to go to death row to learn it. You can just do it by reading my book. You can gain the wisdom that Amanda gains by her journey. Maybe learn from Gosney, from the journeys that I've been through and the things that I've been through, you can learn some of these lessons and there's a little there's a little thread of morality maybe you know i'm gonna let it go and let it i, I discerned what i think it has the meaning but ultimately it's going to be up to the reader to to inject meaning into it but i've created the symbology the lexicon of images and words for you to to understand um maybe a little perspective that you've never understood before so and the ending, oh my gosh, just, the women, I, they should melt with the ending. I hope, I'm praying. I, I hope that Gosney's insights into femininity and the female mind may be unlocked with the, the uh, with this here and the, the little love story that blooms and the whys, the whys of the love story. You know, these alpha male in love is the, is the female thing. Well, why would an alpha male fall in love? That's the question I have for you. And why would it be to somebody like this? Or is it, does he fall in love with somebody like this? Or does he fall in love with somebody else? And why would he do that? So you're going to hear the man's mind working as well as the female mind working and how maybe these things can find each other in this evil world. Um, okay. So, um, Let's see, where are we? Fancy amps. Yeah, you don't even know. This is this is a just that's a cheap amp. That's not my one. I've got these, I've got um I think two of these. Two of these. HD 500. If you have a base, the HD 500, that's the greatest amp. That's the only amp you need. Plug and play, click it goes. I got two, I got two of everything, right? Two of those. Two um, Fender Hot Rod Deluxes, which are American-made tube amps. I don't; you, they're not all American. You have to get the older ones to get the American. But all American-made, all tubes. Um, they're considered kind of cheap, but they have great clear, clean sound. And all I put all the processing through it, so that's that. All of my big bass equipment that I have for the the this little bass amp is great. I used to run a big Harky stack with a RB800 uh, Galeon Kruger head. That was that was my main rig. But it's it's giant and it's packed away. Um, these things are phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, good stuff. I used to play. I'm falling down into a collector. You know, I'm a bass player, really. You should go back look at some of my old stuff. Um, I've got a. I play through. This. Go look at um, Rush's La Villa Strangiato, or or the Yes song that I play. I mean, I play play my bass. That's I'm really a bass player. The guitar stuff. I'm I'm kind of a hacker. I'm not really that good. Bass, I'm always pretty good at. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> okay. Good, good, good. Are we good? Um, very excited about it. You know, it's up now. It's going to be, I got to find my agent. I got to do some marketing. I'm going to have the release party on Saturday night from 8 to midnight. We're going to be drinking. We're going to be pushing books. We're going to have guests, hopefully. And hopefully I can get on some other people's streamers, maybe some. I don't know. The law streamers, you know, I think they're sick of hearing Gosling sell books. So um, maybe it I'll, I'll amp it up with uh, with one of these trials coming up. But um, 
And then I got to go back to work and do my death penalty designs book, which is my next project. This little baby's done and in the bag. And I think that's good. Oh, let's do the, let's see who else is streaming, right? Who else is streaming that we should uh, drop drop over into, huh? Get tired too. I got to go to bed. Got to get up tomorrow. I'm going to go see Dune 2 tomorrow. Oh, we got Sean. Sean is streaming. Let's see, live. Potentially criminal. Jill Graceful Answers is streaming. Let's see. Runkle is streaming. Doing a recap. Let's see. Oh, my. Don't know if anybody else here is interesting. Let's, let's, what do we do potentially criminal? What do you say? Let's see. How far is it? Let's let's stream snipe. I, I've invited Steph, but she hasn't replied yet. I, let's, see. let's stream snipe. This is fun. I've never done this before. It's already uh, pretty. So there's uh, let's let's go see if he's a Sean. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty vibrant already. You could say it that way. We'll put it like that. It's vibrant. Um, let's see here. So. We'll just we'll just leave it there, but that's over on locals. So um, that aside, we do generally try to wait a couple minutes. I know people are um, trying to get in local or YouTube, even locals and uh, rumble and everywhere. We're gonna, we're gonna can you see that? Um, they don't uh, see if we can uh... do the best job at telling you what's going on. So I try to give people a little bit of time to figure on. out what's going on out there that they can. Oh, Sean, you know, I wish then come wish in here because obviously it's a little more fun down. if that does happen that way. Um, All right, let's try it. Did we mess up here? Redirect. Okay, we're going to we're going to do okay. Sean. That's what we messed up. Remember that's the deal, up. right? What we we got to do here. That's why kick isn't working. Got to say Gosby Ray. It's working because it sucks. Right. I'm trying to it, guys. There we go. Kick should be fine now. All right. If you guys are watching, anybody want to kick? I don't think anybody really Let's does, go. but I always good put it night. Out Have a good night. Know. We'll see you Saturday night at eight o'clock. We get people start compulsively gambling.